Before we start this video, a large thank you to Daniel Healy, Jordan Longshaw, Viliam Krasinovic, Asarj, Bernard, Ash Kairos, Milo, Lou, and Rob Rose for their support on Patreon. I know I probably absolutely butchered a couple of those names, but nonetheless, thank you guys for your support. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay guys, in the last video we added a method to repost our enemies and to be reposted. On this video, we're going to add a function to parry our enemies. So open the player controls here, and I've already got the button created, but go to your player actions and create a button for the LT. I'm using the left trigger on the gamepad, and for my mouse and keyboard, I'm using the Z key on the keyboard. So, after that, we'll close that out. And next, we're going to want to go to the input uh, handler or manager for our player, and let's go and add that button in. I'm just going to zoom in here so you guys can see a bit better. Now, I'm going to put mine below the RT input. I will say public bool LT input. Next, we have to enable this input on our on enable function. So right below input actions dot player actions dot RT, we'll just say input actions dot player actions dot LT dot performed plus equals I equals greater than LT input equals true. So when we perform the LT input, we change the LT input bool to true. Now, let's minimize that. Next, we have to go to re say handle attack input. Right now, we have RB and RT. So let's just make a, another if statement here for the LT. Now, there's a few things we can do with this, and I'll describe what I mean here momentarily. So let's say if LT input, and in the future, we're going to have weapon arts, obviously, which is what Dark Souls 3 uses, which is a weapon special ability. So we can say handle weapon art, but also, if you're holding another offhand melee weapon, you can use this to, say, poke a light attack. Uh, so we're going to have to, or for two-handing the weapon rather as well, um, you will actually perform the weapon art of the right-handed weapon. Uh, and if not, you'll perform a light attack with the left-handed weapon. Unless the left-handed weapon is a shield, in which case you will perform um, the shield weapon art. So there's a lot of like branching possibilities here, and we're going to handle it all. But for just this video, we're going to keep it simple and handle um, shields weapon arts. So just parrying for now. But I'm going to keep that pseudo code there anyway. So let's hop over to the player attacker, and let's go to where we see public void handle RB action. And we're going to make a public void handle LT action. And then we're going to use the same kind of sand text we're using up here, follow the same, you know, uh, coding style. And we're going to basically check here for a couple of things first. So let's go to the right weapon first of all. Not the right weapon, sorry, the uh, weapon item rather. Whoops, go to definition. And we're just going to scroll down here, down to the weapon type, and we're just going to make a new bool. And I'm just going to say public bool is shield. Okay, cool. I'm going to say is shield weapon. Let's save that. And then let's go back over here. Let's jump into the player attacker here. And under the handle LT action, we're going to say if player inventory dot left weapon dot is shield weapon. Then we're going to say perform shield weapon art. And then down here in attack actions, let's make one for the LT action. I'm just going to call it private void perform LT weapon art. Then we can say if player manager dot is interacting return. We don't want to be able to do this if we're interacting. Then we can make some pseudo code here and we can say if we are two handing perform weapon art for the right handed weapon. Else perform weapon art for left-handed weapon. And we can pass a bool here for bool is left or is left weapon. And I'm just going to throw these two statements here into an if chain. So we can say if is left weapon and then we can say else it must be the right weapon. And then we can just put these in here like that and we'll get to that momentarily. Okay, now back over here on the weapon script, right below attack animations, I'm going to make a new header. I'm just going to call it weapon art. You can put the weapon art animation under the attack animation header if you'd like. I'm just going to give it its own separate header so it's very distinct and stands out. 
So this will be the animation, uh, the special ability, the special ability uh, of your weapon. And under here, we're going to say animator handler dot play target animation. And then we're just going to simply say player inventory dot left weapon dot weapon art. And then we're going to say that is true because we are interacting and don't want to be able to move out from this. All right, cool. Looks good. Let's save that. Okay, on the input handle, let's say if two hand flag, then we're going to want to do some kind of code that will enable us to do a two handed weapon art. Else, we're not, and we're just going to do a regular weapon art. Now, we're not setting this up. Um, I'm actually going to change this a lot in the future, but I just want to give you an idea of like the direction we're going to head when we handle our weapon arts. So, for now, uh, this isn't actually how the finalized product is going to look. Um, so, I'm just going to say player attacker dot handle LT action because regardless we're going to have to handle the LT action but if we're two handing or not in the future we will handle it uh, a different way so on the player manager let's go over to the late update and then we're going to say right below um, our T input we're going to say input handler dot LT input equals false so after we hit the LT input it immediately returns to false okay cool and then back over here on the player attacker we're going to say perform LT weapon art and then we're going to say input handler two hand flag then we're going to say else if player inventory dot left weapon dot is melee weapon then we're going to want to perform a light attack okay now if we jump into the game here as you can see I've created a shield weapon I'm just going to call it shield I'll give it this little icon for now that's fine and I'm just going to throw in the regular idle animations that I have set up already um, this isn't that important though as for attack animations, I have some, but I'm not going to bother setting them up for this video because I have done this in the past few. You guys know how all that works. I'm just going to copy this idle animation here. And as for the weapon art section, I'm actually just going to put in parry because as you can see in the last video, and I'm going to tick uh, is shield weapon. Now if I click on the animator window here, you can see I have a parry animation. And this is the animation we're going to use for our shield's weapon art. I dropped that in the last video. So let's actually rename this uh, from is left weapon to is two-handing because that makes more sense and down here that means we'll have to put this down here and this up here there we go now that will work okay let's save that minimize that looks good all right now if I go into game and I press the LT button as you can see I perform a parry cool all right we're about halfway done now so let's go over into our character manager script and under combat flags let's make a public bool for is parrying and let's go to our player animator manager and down right here near the bottom if you want or anywhere really honestly um, we're gonna make two functions that we're gonna use on animation events because you guys know how much I love those we're gonna make a public void enable is parrying and a public void disable is parrying and I'm sure you know where I'm headed with this it's very simple. All we're going to do on these functions is change the bool on the character manager from true to false. So on enable is pairing, we're going to say player manager dot is pairing is equal to true. And on disable is pairing, we're going to say player manager dot is pairing equals false. And since this script sits on the game object with the animator, we can use these as animation events. So then let's go do exactly that. Let's click on our player model. Let's go to window animation. Let's go to the parry animation. And in Dark Souls, I think the shields get a six frame parry, I believe. So let's let's enable the parry right here and then go right up to we'll say 18 or 19 and disable parry. So we got five or six frames there. And that, that will do. We don't want to make it too easy, not too hard. Okay, now on the character manager, if you like, you can actually add a public bull for can be parried and depending on the attack you can change this bool using an animation event just like we did before at uh, the start of attack to true or false and you can reset the bool using the animator which I will do in the next video um, but for now we're just going to get the parry system down and then we'll make attacks that can or cannot be parried but I'm going to make that bool um, just so it's set up for now so next on the damage clutter let's make a character manager variable for our character manager and on awake, let's call that by saying character manager equals get component and parent. Now, I had some trouble with this in another project, so this might not work. 
Um, it technically isn't the parent of the weapon because the character is, or the weapon's resting on the hand, and that sits on the child of a child of a child of the game object, but I digress. We might have to change it. So on trigger enter, we're going to also add a couple things. We're going to say character manager, uh, variable of, of type character manager, equals collision dot get component character manager. And we're going to do this on both of these uh, if statements for the player and the enemy. Uh, these are going to be identical. Okay, cool. And then we're going to say, quite simply, if character manager does not equal null, then we're going to say, if character manager dot is parrying, then we're going to basically be hitting this person while they're parrying, and that means we'll have to play the get parried animation. And you want to check here if you are parryable. So if the other person is parrying and you are parryable, then you want to display this animation. Again, this is something I will do in the next video. I'm just saying this here now because some of you might want to add it in um, or attempt it yourselves. And I encourage you to do that. Please go ahead and do that. So let's go to, let's actually change the name of uh, the character manager to enemy character manager because we have a, a variable up top called character manager and that will be very confusing. There we go. So it's quite simple. Before we do damage, we're checking to see if the enemy character manager is parrying. And if they are, then our character manager, we're going to tell it to get a component in children, animator manager, and we're going to say play target animation um, parried. True. So it's very straightforward and very simple. And obviously, if we are parried, we want to return after that so we don't actually take damage. And let's copy that and paste it right below here because it worked the exact same way for an enemy. Okay, that's good. Excellent. Now guys, I attempted this and this does not work. So let's erase that from the awake method, the character manager. We're gonna have to actually initialize it when we initialize our damage colliders, which is very straightforward. So let's find where we're calling this. Okay, here we go. So load weapon damage colliders, you wanna put it right here. We're going to say left hand damage collider dot character manager equals get component parent character manager and the same one for the right hand damage collider, just right below it. And that will work. So basically when you're initializing your damage colliders, you're also um, adding the character manager to that as well. So over on the player animated manager, we're going to say public void enable can be reposted and public void disable can be reposted. So remember that bool we made in the last video where when I checked it, we were able to repost the player. We're going to actually turn that on or off now via animation events again. So we're going to say player manager dot can be reposted equals true and player manager dot can be reposted equals false. And then when you play the parried animation, uh, when you get parried, you're going to, we're going to use animation events and we're going to turn that to true and false on the animation. So if you want to do this, you can copy and paste all those functions on your enemy animator manager and change player manager to enemy if you already have your AI set up to actually look for and uh, attempt to parry. I'm just gonna set it up there for future videos. Now when I go into the game here, if I wait for this guy to attack, I got him to attack for three seconds, and then I parry him, then I can repost him, and there we go, we have a fully completed parry and repost system. Now remember guys, uh, don't forget to add the animation events to the get parried animation. I did that off video, so make sure you're changing the can be reposted bool to true. That way you can actually repost them after you pair them. And this has been one of my favorite videos to make. If you guys learned something here today, please drop a like on my series, leave a comment to help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. It does genuinely help my series out. And if you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. In the next video, we're going to touch on some new topics and as well as add attacks that can and can't be parried. So for example, some attacks in Dark Souls, like with the whip or an Ultra Great Sword, you cannot parry. So we'll make some attacks non-parryable. I will see you guys in the next one.